Hello, Pastor Antonio here again, and we are back here at the Rock Life Podcast for part two of our conversation with the Reynolds, and uh, we are just so excited. The first session was amazing, great content there, and we just want to pick up essentially where we left off. We're talking about, uh, now again, this stemmed from a, a, a conversation uh, more specifically towards single women or single parents, um, but we know that this is practical information for regardless um, of anyone, but we want to get into some of the practical things that you would, you know, you guys had a list that you would tell uh, a single mom to encourage them or a single parent to, to really encourage them. I know you had a list of things. So if you can uh, share that with us. When we did our session, there were four um, subjects or four topics that we wanted to address because we thought they were the key topics that um, single parents dealt with. And we call this session, You Are Not Alone, because I think the first one was loneliness, right? Correct. In, in that, um, and then one other <clears throat> thing that qualifies me is that for the last couple of years, I've been helping a single mom, but loneliness, uh, fear, worry, worry and low self-esteem yeah. were the four things that we identified as the, as the number one battle, spiritual battles. And I also have a handout um, that we can download on uh, spiritual uh, warfare. Um, and these are just verses. And I think low self-esteem is key because uh, you have to remind yourself of who you are in Christ to have the unction to even renew your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to know who you are. And I have verses like you are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you're free from condemnation. Romans 8, 1, you're a child of God, you're a friend of God, you're chosen of God, you're adopted by God. You are free. You don't have to be bound by right. sin. And these kind of things, and when you get these in your spirit, they're going to change your life. But to reiterate, I think it's important that people understand that fear is, it becomes a part of, of your mindset <clears throat> and you have to transform the way you think mm -hmm. and the best way to transform the way you think is through the word of God be transformed by the renewing of your mind it's interesting how when you're born again you're born again instantly you go up there and ask Christ in your life you're born again mm -hmm. your spirits change immediately but your mind isn't right. we all know there's still some mess in our life yeah. once we accept Christ and it's, it's the renewal that's going on in your life. It's the transformation. And it's like a, a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. That caterpillar is born again, but it's ugly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but eventually it transformed into a beautiful butterfly. Yeah. And that's the transformation. Be transformed by renewing your mind. So we have to understand that the stronger we get in the Word of God, the more positive we're going to be as Christians, and, more, and it's going to eliminate fear. It's going to eradicate it. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not happening, you still have a lot of fear in your life, you're probably not reading that word. You're not applying it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's very important. The other thing we talk about worry, you know, cast your cares. Think about cast your cares in uh, uh, that verse. And if you think about who wrote it, Peter wrote it. Mm -hmm. He was a fisherman, right? Yeah. So if he says it's kind of like casting a net off the boat. That's where he was coming from. That's yeah. perspective. So it's not something you just throw a little net out there. Yeah. It took some effort to take that big heavy net, throw it on the side of the boat or off yeah. the side of the boat. And when you cast your care, you have to take that same approach. All right, that's good. This is not just something you just mealy mally around. Mm -hmm. You got to take it. It's fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man that's avails right. much. That's right. And the more you start applying that, these dumb things are going to start disappearing from your life. Mm -hmm. You know, we all had fear at some point. Yeah. We all had things that have gone, but over time, the mind gets renewed if you stick in that word. And yeah. you look back, hey, I'm not doing I'm not worried about that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. You know, those, so those are the four points, right? And I think those, those are awesome. We're going to have uh, those available on the site or in the show notes for you. Um, and so I, I also want to ask, and you guys have talked about, uh, you mentioned earlier about community, obviously. So uh, Dr. Nassi, if you can, you know, so for women who are trying to stay or from keeping isolated, how can someone get connected? Um, well, like I said, what helped me, even as a teenager, was the local church. And we have an awesome church. <clears throat> and we have a ministry just for women, which is, you know, Women Rock. Um, actually, we meet every Thursday morning at 930. And if this has been a struggle or if anything on this podcast has blessed you, you need to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're having a big conference coming up. I think it's um, September 15th. Yeah. And um, 
you know, you need to be there. We're going to have an um, awesome speaker. If you haven't heard Robert Madu, he's excellent. And other speakers and workshops and blessings there. So, you know, the Bible says don't avoid the assembling of the saints. You know, you think uh, what the devil tries to do is he tries to isolate you and make you feel lonely and make you feel alone when God's there all the time. When you accept him, he lives within you, mm -hmm. you know, and you need to come out and hear something that you're going through right now is something that somebody else has gone through. And what that person is going through, somebody else has gone through. You can hear what verses did they stand on? What did they do? Where did they get help when they didn't have food for their kids? You know, so our, as iron sharpens iron, the countenance of one person sharp, sharpens another. And we need each other. Mm -hmm. We need to build on uh, our strength you can't do life alone right. you know so I say the first thing is to get into church and uh, utilize the services here women rock the food ministry Tuesday and Thursday right. mornings get the food for your children and your family um, and uh, the conference on yeah. September 15th and, and you had mentioned earlier about you know even you as a child going to church and the importance that that was so for our, our single parents or single moms who are even bring their, bringing their kids, if they don't feel like they're doing sufficient, they're, they come, they get ministered to amongst other women, but also they can bring their children into an environment that is going to grow them as well. And every parent wants the best for their child. That's yeah, the Bible says train the child up in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart. And I mentioned earlier that my mom wasn't really going to church. She was working a lot. She was tired or whatever. And it was when I was 25 that I helped her rededicate her life to Christ. Okay. And so that is um, training up. She was trained in a, in a Christian household. And even though she wasn't serving him continuously through her life, she began to serve him again. I think it's just awesome how a lot of our children's ministry here at The Rock is so awesome. Mm -hmm. And the kids are bringing the parents to church because right. they love it so yeah. much, you know. That's right. You know, one of the things we talk about uh, going to church, what do you do the other four, five, six days a week? Mm -hmm. It's important that you surround yourself with other believers. Yeah. And some of us just need to get on that Just Say No program. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about drugs. Well, maybe I am. <laughs> but you got to say no to some friends, right. some old friends. Mm -hmm. And you got to lay aside, what's the Bible say? Lay aside every weight. Right. Some friends are weight. That's They're good. heavy. That's good. And you got to get to the point where you say no because you got to get around folks that are positive, right. got the word in them. They're going to encourage you. They're going to lift you up. They're going to build you up. And more like Vanessa said earlier, like iron sharpens, sharpens iron. So is the countenance of man sharpens the countenance of man. So it's important that not only on Sunday, Wednesday, or whatever week, day of the week you're at church, when you're not at church, you gotta be around good people, mm -hmm. some people that are believers. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. I know, and you know, you have talked about, uh, and again, we talked about how you guys lead the marriage ministry in, in, in your own marriage 34 years. Uh, what would you talk about or say to, in terms of even for strengthening marriages? To me, for Vanessa and I, it was a triangle. You got Vanessa here, and you got Larry Reynolds here, and you got this triangle. On the top of that triangle, guess who? It's God. It's God. That's right. And so the closer you come to that top of that triangle, the closer you come to each other. Mm -hmm. And whether it's quoting scripture and all that stuff, like people like to do, it's practical. What are you doing when nobody's looking? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I know Vanessa prays for me. I know it. Ain't no question about it. So prayer is, is key. But communication, there's a lot of ways to do it, but the idea of having the Word, having God in the middle of your life, it will simplify every aspect of your marriage. Yeah. And it's got to be consistent. I think the consistency that we're talking about and the communication and the prayer, these are things that they can learn by coming to the marriage ministry. Right. Right. You know, and just to prompt one of the events that we have coming up on August the 11th is the baseball game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> The uh, if you haven't signed up yet, or limited bought a ticket, seats. There's limited seats, limited there. limited seats. You know that commercial, <laughs> limited. Um, but uh, the October eleventh, August, August 11th. excuse me, uh -huh. August eleventh. Uh, we're gonna go to Angel Stadium and it'd be a great night of fellowship, and you can surround yourself with some good folks. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it'd be a great time of fellowship. Um, simple. Right. Uh, tickets are very inexpensive. Food. Uh, we got food, which I'll yeah. say that again, food, and yeah. I'll say free. <laughs> so uh, you Not need to show up. Your ticket. Yeah. All right. yeah. No. So the, again, I, the 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 same tone is the community getting around other believers and getting strengthened up that way. That's that's it. so. 
going back to not feeling alone. Well, don't be alone mm-hmm. and allow yourself to be around people. Definitely. Um, one last question that I have, and it kind of goes to what you're saying. So we're talking about all this, um, maybe even from a man's perspective. So what do you tell a man, uh, Reverend Larry, who didn't have a dad, didn't see a marriage? So are in marriages or are fathers that didn't have an example, so are doing everything by trial and error, or trying to figure it out as they go with no real example, no one... Uh, guiding them? Uh, I think you have to find somebody to be accountable to and somebody to look up to that is a born again, Uh walking and talking believer. I'm not saying they're perfect, but you know in the end of the day when you need to hear some truth and some practical advice, you're getting somebody with some word in them. And if you look in the Bible, you know, there's numerous times where Somebody looked up somebody else. I'll follow me as I follow Christ. That's what Paul was saying, right? Yeah. So he was an example of so many different people. And there's people in my life that I was single. No, my dad, my, my relationship with my father wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Just it wasn't. It was non-existent. You know, he showed up once in a while. I mean, I live 30 minutes from where he lived in college, and he didn't go to one of my games. At least that he may have snuck in there, mm-hmm. but there was no relationship. So I'm example 1A right. of having a, no father, and yet I was able to look up to my pastor, wherever I was at. Pastor Jim's been a tremendous influence, mm-hmm. whether directly or indirectly. Mm-hmm. My pastor Corbett in North Carolina, and it's been like that. And, I, and those three or four guys I was reciting earlier, mm-hmm. these guys were my fathers right. when I was growing up. That's good. Um, they the were, heavenly father is the biggest father and, that they yeah, have. Yeah, and I was, that's where I was going to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the father of all fathers, not even a close second, right. is, is, is God. Mm-hmm. And the Lord Jesus Christ impacts your life in such a way. Uh, if you're fatherless, you, all the answers are in the Bible, whether you get somebody to tell them to you or not. That's good. Well, this has just been so golden. We've gone over so much. We've gone over some of the practical tools. And really at the base of everything was... Uh, closeness in our relationship with Christ and reliance on Him. Before we wrap up, just one last thought from each of you, just uh, in terms of whether this subject or not, in ter- in, in, in encouragement for people in those positions. Well, well, I'll I'll start. Um, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you in due time. It's good. Doesn't matter if you are bound or base, good, bad, a lot or a little. Uh, you have to remain humble. Mm-hmm. Even if you be tre- become a tremendous success like a lot of folks, you still got to remember God's first. You got to humble. Stay humble. Some folks are humble without, there's no choice. You just start out humble be- beginnings. Yeah. You know. But to me, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you, it says, in due time, at the right time. That's good. And what I would say is probably that um, life happens in seasons, and. Um, you know, there was an old song way back that says, my soul looks back in wonder of how I got over. Mm-hmm. You know, as you pass through these seasons, you don't even see yourself, but God has a plan. You know, the Bible says that there's a plan and a purpose for each of us. And um, whatever you're going through, whether you're in a season where you have to go to the food line or you're in a job that you feel is not meeting your needs and you want something better, it's only a season. And when you're faithful in that season, then God is the one that promotes. It doesn't matter what the boss says. It doesn't matter what society says that position is supposed to be. You know, it's it's God who does the exalting. And I just say, if you're faithful to God, if you serve him, I'm a living witness that he will come through and that you're never alone, that he's there with you through every step of the way. That's good. Be consistent. Yeah. Just be consistent. Yeah. So good. Well, thank you guys for joining us today on Rock Life Podcast. We are so grateful. We look forward to seeing you next time. Tune in soon.